Okay. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the SUG.org's weekly video. My name is Sean Bordner and we have with us here today Andrew Connell. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, man. No problem, Sean. We are in Vegas at the SharePoint Conference 2009 and we're having a great time and so I'm going to ask Andrew a few questions and let you go. Okay. So I guess the first obvious question is, have you been enjoying the conference? Very much so. Very much. I'm very glad that it's over. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Long week. Good I'm first. sure. Good yeah. show. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay, well, let's just dive right in. Andrew, if you had to pick just only one thing mm -hmm. that SharePoint 2010 brings to the table that's new mm -hmm. for the IT professional that's really going to knock their socks off, what would that one thing be? So it's probably going to be in the service application framework. Um, not. It's just... It provides Microsoft, it provides SharePoint basically its own little cloud, yeah. makes things so much more scalable, makes opens up the offerings so much more, being able to have a true multi-tenant offering and everything. It really it addresses a lot of the, the drawbacks we have with SSPs. Sure. It definitely seems like it's going to be, it's one of the most impressive and probably most compelling reasons for an upgrade from totally my perspective. Great. Yeah, I mean, if you're an IT pro and you can't get excited about the whole multi-tenant thing and yeah. being able to use the service apps, Nothing's going to make you excited. Yeah, and the cool thing is, I mean, you know that it's also, um, you know that it's well architected because the biggest customer of SharePoint now is SharePoint Online. So right. you know they have to go through and have a really good multi-tenant offering, and yeah. that's the best best way to do it is to just go yeah. through and make sure that's in the product. So you're a good point. Now, same question, Andrew, but mm -hmm. this time a different role. What's the one thing that's going to knock the socks off of a developer? So that that one is is hard for me. It's like a toss up between two. Okay. Um, and I can't, I can't decide which one is more important there. Sure. It's either going to be the sandbox or mm -hmm. it's going to be, which kind of also for IT pros, um, but also the client object model. Because a lot of people having so much frustration or having so many challenges of trying to get data out of SharePoint into different vehicles, however you want to use it, yeah. the client object model just makes it so much simpler now. And it's with an API that they're familiar with working on the server. Mm -hmm. um, from the, the sandbox, it's going to solve a lot of problems in terms of um, bad code, bringing servers down and stuff. Mm -hmm. Number one issue, that, that number one root cause for all issues with SharePoint is bad code. Sure. So being able to go through and address those by putting them in the sandbox and locking them up, it's good for IT pros, but it's also good for developers to know that they can also get their solutions out there and into the environment a hell of a lot faster. Yeah, that makes a so. lot of sense, sure. And lastly, the role changes now. I'm an end user. I might not even know what the platform is, and, and maybe I shouldn't know. Mm -hmm. I know it's my intranet or whatever. How do I benefit from that platform being upgraded to 2010? So the two of the biggest areas that I see, I mean, first of all, the UI is a lot more intuitive. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a lot easier to get around SharePoint. Uh, the, there's a lot less page refreshes. The dialogue framework's a lot easier. The intuitive uh, fluent UI with the ribbon that we have in, in Office already. Um, but the, there's two big areas that I think that are really compelling that we didn't really have in the previous one. Um, you've got... Um, You've got um, uh, business intelligence and ECM. Mm -hmm. Microsoft's approach for both of those now is not having little siloed areas for this is where you're going to do your BI stuff, right. and this is where you're going to do your ECM stuff. Now it's all the capabilities of BI and ECM, they're going to be just smattered throughout the platform so that from BI, you can go through and slice and dice and analyze data to make better business decisions really anywhere. Mm -hmm. ECM, you can have more people participating in an ECM, um, an EC, in, in a, like a records manager or document management, um, scenario and giving the records managers more power to go through and making it easier for them to manage all their stuff sure. and to be able to get insight into what's going on. But getting more people to participate is the key to a good ECM solution. Right. And by being able to just make it easier and dumbing it down and making it more broad across the platform, it's I think it's just going to be a win-win. Yeah. Those yeah. two areas to me are specifically ECM, I think, has got the area for the most potential growth with SharePoint 2010. Um, and wrapping in that, I mean, the metadata that's all across the platform is just huge. Mm -hmm. Metadata was a hard one. I was almost thinking of using that one instead of the service right. app. But <laughs> right. it was kind of, it's a toss up. For IT pros, sure. I think administrators, so that's really the service app. Sure, sure. Okay. And, and the last question, Andrew, is going to be um, I'm an organization, mm -hmm. and you helped me stand up my SharePoint 2010, and quite frankly, or 2007, mm -hmm. and quite frankly, I'm very happy with it. We, we, get, we finally got our arms around it and we're using it and, and we're making better decisions because of it. We got processes automated now and we're pretty happy with it. What's in it for me to upgrade to uh, SharePoint 2010? So this could be a huge list of things with all the new features, but I'm just going to pick one that I think is probably the most important thing. It's metadata. Metadata everywhere. The tagging, the taxonomies, the folksonomies, being able to have keywords and stuff. The way that that is so integrated into the product across everything is really cool. You go through and you tag up pages. You can still do a social tagging or you can go through and tag them up in a more structured way. 
you can go through and use the tagging to go through and make it easier to get data out of SharePoint. So if I have a document library with tens of thousands of items inside of it, and we use folders to go through and segment it, I don't have to go hunt and peck where stuff is. <laughs> right. I can turn the navigation over and say, do a metadata-based navigation, mm -hmm. and I click through like the different terms that I want to be able to look for, and it just says, oh, this is the content you're looking for. Right. Throw it in a bucket, tag the hell out of it, and pull out what you want sure. based on the classification. Um, the tagging is already seen in the industry with things like um, Technorati and on Facebook and everybody. It's so much. It's such an easy well, way to find stuff. People used to it anyway. Yeah, they're used to yeah. it and everything. Um, but that and the, the the ability to go through and leverage it in search mm -hmm. is just. I mean, you go through and search for stuff, and it automatically pulls the tags out as a relevancy, um, as a drive. A, what is it called? Drill down or a, a yeah. filtering or whatever. Mm -hmm. Refinement. A refinement. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And then I can go through and just say, no, I'm only looking for things that go with this or this or this. Right. And it's just like, oh, let me just change those down a little. Sure. It's it's so much more, it's so powerful. Yeah. 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 Well, Andrew, I, I know you're trying to get out of here. So thank you so much for your time. Cool. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Take care.